Hi Gardeners, I'm Lourdes for Native Plant Channel and today we're going to be discussing probably the closest that humans can get to a magical experience and that is fireflies or lightning bugs. Let me start with the basics that fireflies are not flies at all, they are beetles because they have a hard outer shell and um, although there are many different species and they live in different habitats, many of them prefer a woodland edge like this. Fireflies are habitat specific, just as plants are. Each species of firefly has a certain habitat it needs to thrive. For example, just as many plants need a specific soil requirement, such as either wet soil or dry soil, fireflies have their own requirements. Some will be found only near a marsh area, or perhaps a deep forest, or some need more open spaces. Some are up in treetops, others live lower to the ground. In the Northeast, a woodland edge is a great place to find many. Those of us who garden in the Northeast are so fortunate because only fireflies east of the Rocky Mountains actually light up. The West contains fireflies as well, but theirs don't light up. So wow, are we lucky. And although we think of fireflies as one thing, there are actually many different species. There are over 2,000 all over the world, and North America has over 100, with the Mid-Atlantic states having a dozen or more species for us to enjoy. Keep watching this video, and you will learn how you can help conserve them and create great habitat for them so that you can enjoy them right in your own backyard. Um, so we're going to be going through the steps for doing that. The phenomenal experience we enjoy is really all about love. The light created is how fireflies, the males and the females, find each other. Although it varies by species, mostly it is the males that will fly around as the females stay on the ground. The males will flash their light and if the female likes it, she'll flash back. He will fly to her on the ground and then they can mate and reproduce and we get a whole lot more lightning bugs. The lights allow them to find their own species. The lights range from yellow to orangish to green and also they each have their own distinctive flashing pattern. Um, there is a certain time interval in between. That's how they get to know who they are and can find each other in, uh, in their habitat. It's a shame that the adults that we enjoy so much only live from a few days to about two weeks. Some of them don't even feed. Um, their job is basically to reproduce. Fireflies spend most of their life cycle in the ground as larvae where we don't even see them. But there, they will glow. In fact, even the ones that do not glow as adults will glow as larvae in the ground, which is how they're known as glow worms. Here's an example of what firefly larva looks like. So if you see this, don't in any way harm it or you will be killing a firefly. This is why part of conservation is to not disturb the soil. Because when you disturb the soil, you can be killing the firefly larva. In fireflies, bioluminescence, or the production of light by living organisms, is the chemical reaction that requires oxygen. Fireflies produce cold light. They are so efficient at what they do that almost 100% of this reaction produces light with almost no heat generated. Meanwhile, 90% of the electricity used by an incandescent light bulb produces heat. Only 10% actually produces light. The majority of fireflies produce toxins that protect them from, from predators. However, in some species, the females don't produce toxins and lure the males and then eat them in order to sequester their toxins. Native Plant Channel brings gardeners information to help make their gardens more eco-friendly. Please subscribe to this channel and click the bell to be notified of upcoming videos. Also, please check my Facebook page where I have additional information on fireflies. Um, I, and watch till the end of this video for all the tips on how you can help create better habitat for them. Like many species of insects and other wildlife, fireflies are declining throughout the world. So we need to take action in order to be able to preserve the experience of 
a summer night full of fireflies for the generations to come. Fireflies are declining for a number of reasons, including habitat loss, as fields and forests are developed into housing or commercial areas. The use of pesticides kills them, as well as the food they eat and need to survive. Light pollution also affects them. Nighttime lights make it more difficult for fireflies to find their mates and reproduce. Since fireflies spend most of their life at ground level, ground-disturbing activities such as mowing, raking, thatch removal, etc. harms them. Climate change is also believed to be a factor. One study predicts that a 2% increase in climate warming will cause 18% of invertebrates to lose at least half of their range. In addition, climate change can decrease firefly populations as increased flooding results in habitat loss and as their food sources are lost. There is a river south of Bangkok where villagers say the fireflies were so numerous they could use their light to guide their boats in the night along the curves of the river. Sadly, in the time span of one generation, they say that those populations have been reduced by two-thirds due to development and to tourism related to fireflies. There is such a thing as firefly tourism, and I'm going to be discussing that in a little bit. There are even synchronous fireflies right in the Great Smoky Mountains of Tennessee and also other places in the world where they coordinate to walk flash at the same time. So you get this fantastic light show of fireflies all flashing at the same time. So let's discuss how to protect fireflies from being ex extinguished. First, recognize that both larvae and adult females spend most of their lifespan at ground level and below. Anything that disturbs the soil poses a risk to them. Reduce the size of your lawn and plant native plants and grasses that will create better habitat for them. Mow less often as ground trampling kills them and keep grass mown high, not low. The same applies in order to protect bees and many other insects and keeping lawns taller actually creates healthier lawns. Males use grasses and flowering plants for resting and hiding. Leave areas with higher grasses, which provide habitat. Now, some people are under the impression that taller lawns attract ticks, but a study done by the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Forest Service in Massachusetts found that unmown lawns did not increase the number of ticks. Another study conducted by the University of Connecticut has shown that it is Japanese barberry, a ubiquitous garden shrub that greatly increases the number of ticks and Lyme disease. Leave the leaves. Leaf litter and the moisture it retains is critical to firefly survival as it provides shelter and moisture that attract what firefly larvae eat. In addition to fireflies, many insects hide and lay eggs in leaf litter. Leaf removal, shredding, or bagging destroys not not destroys not only fireflies but such insects including butterflies as well. What is the point of adding plants to create a better habitat if one kills eggs and larvae by bagging leaves and carting these creatures in a paper bag to the curb? One way to keep these materials in your garden is to leave a corner of your yard as a leaf and brush pile. Avoid soil disturbance. This is especially important in wetland areas and forests um, and includes digging or driving machinery. Many articles have been written warning us of a worldwide insect apocalypse and the dangers to humans of declining insect populations. If you are watching this video, I'm most likely preaching to the choir. However, this warning should not be taken lightly. After all, we have been aware of the potential of pandemics to kill millions since at least the 1918 Spanish flu, and yet we're not properly prepared to respond to the coronavirus pandemic. Insecticides destroy a broad variety of insects, including bees, butterflies, and fireflies. 
any insecticide designed to kill grubs will kill firefly larvae, and adults are likely to be killed by broad spectrum sprays, including those that kill mosquitoes. Remember that the best way to reduce mosquito populations is to remove standing water. If this is not possible, mosquito dunks, a product that can be put in standing water, is the next best, least toxic method of control. Remember that killing grubs and slugs eliminates food sources for butterflies. Don't use chemical fertilizers on lawns, especially those containing ammonia, as this kills the slugs, snails, and worms that fireflies eat. Slug baits also reduce firefly larvae food. Let's allow our ecosystems to naturally balance themselves as predators and prey keep themselves in check. Control invasive plants, especially those near rivers and wetlands. A study showed that areas where common reed or Phragmites was dominant destroyed habitat for fireflies because it outcompetes native plants that provide habitat and food for fireflies. Another important action is to turn off lights at night. Lights interfere with species that mate at night and they need the darkness to communicate successfully. Some of them are so hampered by light, they won't even fly during a full moon. Please, turn off outdoor lights when not needed. If lights can't be turned off, use red bulbs which interfere less with fireflies. Only Southeast Asia and the Great Smoky Mountains have synchronous fireflies, which light up at the same time when they are attracting mates. Tourism to the Great Smoky Mountains to see these fireflies has increased in recent years with as many as 30,000 people traveling there over a two-week period to experience this phenomenon firsthand. However, tourism has led to habitats being trampled in some parts of the world. Therefore, it needs to be managed properly in order to protect the fireflies. If you have a friend who only cares about insects in terms of how useful they might be to humans, well, fireflies have been very helpful in treating disease. Luciferin, the magic behind the firefly's glow, has been used in cancer research to study tumor growth. Luciferase, an enzyme that is part of the process that produces light, has been used to observe interactions among cells in detecting blood clots and understanding diseases such as HIV and Parkinson's, and to identify bacteria contamination in food. In fact, during the late 1900s, millions of fireflies were collected for research involving luciferase, Fortunately, a synthetic version was, creating, uh, was created, eliminating the need to collect fireflies. Fireflies have been admired by humans for probably over a thousand years. There are references to them in the early Chinese and uh, writings from India as well. Um, they have been reproduced in artwork from early times, and even Shakespeare mentioned glowworms in Hamlet. There's a Japanese legend that lightning bugs are actually the souls of the dead. Variations of this tale say they're the spirits of warriors who fell in battle. Fireflies appear in many Native American folklore as well. In ancient Amazonian mythology, firefly light came from the gods and provided hope and guidance. Let's be inspired by hope and do what we can to preserve these magical creatures. I appreciate everything you are doing by planting native plants and creating ecosystems that are friendly to our fireflies and other insects. You are helping to make the world better one garden at a time. Please continue to do what you're doing. Please subscribe to Native Plant Channel. Look for uh, upcoming videos. Keep making your garden a refuge and you will be able to continue watching fireflies and have their magic come to you. And remember, turn off your outside lights so that their lights can continue to shine. Have a great day.